This is the USS John F. Kennedy, America's $13 billion attempt to build the most advanced warship on Earth. And right now, it's failing. It was supposed to join the fleet in 2024, then 2025. Now the Navy is quietly saying March 2027, and even that date isn't guaranteed. The reason isn't labor or money, but it's technology. Two core systems inside the ship keep failing, and without them, this carrier can't launch aircraft, can't recover them, and can't fight. America tried to build the future of warfare in one leap, and right now, that leap isn't landing. Let's break down what's happening and what it means when the most powerful Navy on the planet can't make its own flagship work. First, you have to appreciate the scale of what the Kennedy actually is. Because calling this thing a ship is like calling the Burj Khalifa a tall building. Technically true, wildly insufficient. The Kennedy is over 1,100 feet long, longer than three football fields glued together, with a flight deck wider than the wingspan of a 747. When it's fully loaded, the whole beast weighs over 100,000 tons. If you parked it next to your house, the shadow alone would crush your property value. Oh, and it carries 4,660 people. That's not a crew, that's a town. This thing has its own hospital, its own post office, its own everything. If it had a Starbucks, it would qualify as a small American city. Construction kicked off in 2015 at Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia. Now, normally, when someone builds a ship, they do it in a nice, controlled environment with a clear plan. But carriers are built in giant puzzle piece sections, each of which is so big it could double as a bridge support. By 2019, they had it floating. And ever since then, it's been in what the Navy calls outfitting. Translation, installing systems that cost more than most small countries' GDPs and hoping they work on the first try. Spoiler, they didn't. And here's where things get fun. The Ford-class carriers, this is the second ship in that class, were designed to be a 40-year leap ahead of every other carrier on Earth. Not 10 years, not 20. 40. That's ambitious in the same way I'm going to build a rocket in my backyard is ambitious. Cool idea, extremely risky. The biggest leap is hidden deep inside the hull. Two A1B nuclear reactors. Each of them produces about three times the electrical power of the reactors on the older Nimitz-class carriers. Three times? That's not a power plant increase. That's an energy drink overdose for warships. And why do you need that much juice? Because the Navy knows the future of warfare isn't just jets and bombs. It's lasers. It's railguns. It's directed energy weapons straight out of a Marvel movie. And the old carriers? They're basically trying to run high-tech weapons on the electrical equivalent of a phone charger. The Ford class is built for whatever comes next. In fact, in 2025, the Kennedy fired up those reactors and moved under its own power for the very first time. That's a huge milestone. You know that moment when you finally start your project car after three years of staring at it in your garage? Multiply that by a thousand and give it nuclear power. But the upgrades don't stop there. The flight deck isn't using steam catapults anymore. Those big towers you've seen in movies that blast jets into the sky with pressurized steam. The Ford class has EMALS, the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, which basically hurls planes into the air using the world's angriest magnet. It's smoother, more efficient, and can launch way more types of aircraft, including drones that would get yeeted into orbit by a steam catapult. Emails, surprisingly, is the part that actually works. They tested it with dead loads, basically giant metal stand-ins for actual aircraft, and everything looks good so far. But landing those planes? Yeah, that's where things start to fall apart. Because the Kennedy's high-tech arresting gear is, no joke, the biggest reason this whole ship is stuck in delivery purgatory. The Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG, is supposed to be the next evolution of stopping planes that land on a carrier. Instead of hydraulic systems, it uses a mix of water turbines and electric motors. Sounds great, right? Except the system keeps failing, and not in small ways. We're talking, if this breaks, the plane rolls off the deck and becomes fish food, levels of failure. And it's not like you're stopping the same plane every time. The system has to catch everything from Super Hornets weighing 47,000 pounds to F-35Cs weighing 70,000 pounds. 
all hitting the deck at highway speeds. You can't get that wrong even once. The Ford, the lead ship in this class, had years of trouble with AAG. Years. And the Kennedy is right back in that world, running test after test after test. But wait, there's more. Because the Navy decided if they're reinventing the catapults and the arresting gear, why not reinvent the elevators too? The Kennedy has 11 advanced weapons elevators. Think of them as high-speed electromagnetic lifts built to move thousands of pounds of bombs and missiles from deep inside the ship to the flight deck. On older carriers, weapons elevators run on hydraulics and cables. On the Ford class, they run on what if Willy Wonka designed a freight lift? And just like AAG, they keep breaking. The Ford's elevators were so delayed that, no exaggeration, the ship entered service without several of them working. The Navy was literally hand-carrying ammunition at one point. And if you've ever carried groceries upstairs, imagine doing that with missiles. The Kennedy is determined not to repeat that disaster, which is good, but it means more delays, more testing, more certifications. This is why the Navy keeps pushing the delivery date. It's not because they're lazy. It's not because Congress forgot to approve funds. It's because the Navy refuses to accept delivery of a ship that can't fight. And a carrier whose elevators don't move and whose arresting gear fails? That's not a warship. That's a very expensive hotel. But let's zoom out for a second. Because the real question is, why does this matter? Why does the Navy even need this ship? Aircraft carriers are the backbone of U.S. military power. A single carrier can roll up off the coast of any country and instantly change the entire geopolitical mood. You don't need permission to dock. You don't need to rely on bases. It's independent, mobile, and capable of projecting air power hundreds of miles inland. If a carrier shows up, everyone pays attention. Right now, the U.S. has 11 carriers. The goal is 12. Until the Kennedy joins the fleet, the Navy is stretched thin. Meanwhile, China is building carriers at a rapid pace and testing hypersonic weapons. Russia's modernizing. Iran's buying missiles like they're on Black Friday sale. The Ford-class carriers are supposed to secure American naval dominance for the next half century. These ships aren't built for the battles of today. They're built for battles that might not happen for 20 or 30 years. That's why the Navy is stuffing them with power reserves, advanced radar, futuristic catapults, and enough tech that if you told someone in 1980 this ship existed, they'd assume it came from aliens. So yes, the Kennedy is late. Yes, the cost overruns are wild. Yes, every headline makes it sound like the Navy is failing an engineering class. But if they get this right, if AAG works, if the weapons elevators work, if all of this comes together, you're looking at a ship that changes naval warfare for the next 50 years. The real question is, can they actually pull it off? March 2027 is the new delivery date. Will they make it? Will AAG behave? Will the elevators finally decide to participate like responsible adults? Let me know in the comments what you think. Will this be the Navy's greatest technological leap forward or the world's most expensive lesson in over-engineering? And while you're down there, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications because you know we're going to update you the second this mega carrier finally leaves the shipyard.